You might know this play, Copenhagen, by Michael Frayn. There's this line that he attributes to Bohr. And Bohr was the great thinker of early foundations of quantum mechanics, Danish physicist, where Bohr says to his wife, nobody's thought of a way to kill people using quantum mechanics. Now, of course, then there's the nuclear bomb. And what I love about this was the pressure scientists were under to do something with this nuclear physics and and to enter this race over um, a nuclear weapon. But really, at the same time, 1939, really, uh, Oppenheimer's thinking about black holes. There's a there's even a small line in Chris Nolan's film. It's very hard to catch. There's a reference to it in the film where he they're sort of joking. Well, I guess nobody's going to pay attention to your paper now, you know, because uh, because of the Nazi advance on Poland. That's the other remarkable thing about Oppenheimer is he's also a central figure in the construction of the bomb. Right. So it's theory and experiment clashing together right. with the geopolitics. Exactly. So, of course, Oppenheimer, now known as the father of the atomic bomb, um, he talks about destroyers of worlds. Um, but it's the same technology. And that's what I mean by science is agnostic, right? It's the same technology, overcoming a critical mass, um, igniting thermonuclear fusion. Eventually, there was a fission. The original bomb was a fission bomb. And fission was first shown by Lies Meitner, who showed that a certain uranium, when you bombarded it with protons, broke into smaller pieces that were less than the uranium, right? So some of that mass, that E equals MC squared energy, had escaped. And it was the first kind of concrete demonstration of this Einstein's most famous equation. 